Well, good day, everybody, and welcome back. Well, I thought it would be a good opportunity to talk a little bit about my personal photography. What kind of cameras do I carry, and what kind of photography am I doing? I haven't really talked about that very much lately, so stay tuned. While much of my past photography has been involved in, you might call, alternative photographic techniques like paper negatives in large format cameras, direct positive, reversal processing, etc. The bulk of my day-to-day -day photography really involves using digital cameras. I use my phone once in a while if it's convenient, if I don't have one of these. Now, I have three other, at least three other digital cameras besides these two. They're Panasonic Lumix Micro Four Thirds, and I use them almost exclusively for video use. In fact, you're looking through a Lumix G7. So my Micro Four Thirds cameras, though they are very capable for still photography, I use them exclusively for video. On the other hand, the digital cameras that I typically take out for still photos are usually one of these two. So recently I found myself combining the necessity to take a morning walk every day with photography. So I will carry one of these two cameras with me. It's kind of fun because it not only combines walking with photography, but it gives me an opportunity to work on this project of documenting my neighborhood. It's kind of fun just to go through the neighborhood, have a camera with you, and I don't have to take pictures. It's not the intention that that's what the purpose is. It's really just for exercise to get a walk in. But it's nice having the camera with me. So if I do come across something, document it. On your left, this is a Canon T7. This is a digital SLR, single lens reflex digital camera. It is an APS-C size sensor and I'm using a 24mm f2.8 lens. So it's a kind of a compact but still rather bulky digital SLR. And then on your right, this is the Ricoh GR3. I'm currently using it with an external optical viewfinder that mounts on the hot shoe. Uh, just because, uh, we'll talk about this in a little bit, but the screen on the GR is easily washed out in sunlight and it does not have an eye level electronic viewfinder. So, two entirely different kinds of digital cameras, but I enjoy using them both. So let's talk about what are the advantages of each one and why would you want to pick one over the other perhaps. Well, the Ricoh GR3 I usually carry with the actual original strap, a tiny little hand strap. I have other wrist straps for cameras, but I find they make the GR3 bigger than it really is. So this little strap it comes with is not much more than like a shoelace size strap. But what I've done is I've put a rubber grommet o-ring on the strap and I can use the o-ring to cinch up the strap on my wrist so that the strap doesn't easily fall off and if I want to carry it in my hand all the time like this it becomes very convenient. On the other hand the Canon T7 is a much bigger camera and it has a nice grip though. Uh, I've put these little cord type loops on the strap lugs and I'm using a oversized strap for this camera. This is actually the kind of a strap you might use for a computer shoulder bag, but I like it because it is so comfortable. And then I typically wear this bandolero style diagonally over the front and have the camera hanging down on my left side. And it makes it very convenient to walk around. The camera hanging down on the left, I can just grab it, bring it up to eye level and snap my picture. So two entirely different cameras. This camera, even with the external optical viewfinder, will fit in my front pants pocket. Truly a pocketable camera, whereas certainly this is not a pocketable camera. Your intentionality is very visible even before you put the camera up to your eye. The fact that you're wearing the camera with a big strap makes it obvious that you're a photographer looking to take pictures. And with the Canon being an SLR, meaning you're looking optically through the lens via a mirror and prism, I can see the world, the real life world out there happening in real time, not mediated through an electronic screen and get really good responsiveness with it. 
these are plastic kind of what we call the melted candy bar look as someone once said uh, these have evolved from the era of the first digital single lens reflex cameras they've evolved into this line with canon but these are not fetish objects these are not like fujifilm cameras or even sony cameras with their modernist minimalist electronic aesthetic look or certainly not like uh, Leica cameras with their particular aesthetic. There's nothing really aesthetic about these cameras. These are smooth, blobby, plasticky looking tools. They're very utilitarian. There's nothing aesthetically pleasing about this kind of a camera. Its only value is really the fact that it does one thing really well, which is it gives you an optical viewfinder through the lens viewing and blazingly fast and accurate autofocus. It is an SLR, single lens reflex. When you're looking through the viewfinder, you're seeing the optical image through the actual taking lens through a mirror and prism system to your viewfinder. You have very accurate framing. Unlike a rangefinder camera, have a viewfinder off on the left side of the body and you're not really seeing the perspective of the scene from the same position that the taking lens is going to be recording it. There is an autofocus system built into the optical viewfinder. I have it set up where the middle box in the very middle of the picture is my autofocus sensor and when I half press the shutter button it lights up with a little red LED. Whatever that box is over it'll focus immediately and then I can take the picture. I can hold the uh, shutter button down halfway to gain focus and I can recompose if I want and then take the shot. But these are very blazingly fast cameras. Like that. This camera comes with a 18 to 55 mil stabilized zoom lens and you can get one of those camera zoom lens packages for around $500 or less. Of course you can buy two of these for the price of one of these. So this is a kind of a point and shoot style camera. It has a built-in fixed length focal length 28 millimeter equivalent lens. It is an APS-C size sensor but it relies upon contrast detect autofocus which can be a problem. It's not the fastest focusing camera. It's not like this. But Ricoh do have another feature in these cameras that's called snap focus. But with snap focus you preset the focal distance in meters ahead of time and then when you press the shutter button it immediately focuses and takes the picture immediately. There's no hunting, there's no focus delay. So if you kind of anticipate what distance you're going to be shooting at, snap focus makes these cameras very, very quick. But if you're using autofocus, it's contrast detect based and the best way to use them is to tap the screen and put the little box over what part of the image you want to have focused and then let it focus and then take the picture which works great unless you happen to be shooting outdoors in bright sunlight like I live in the desert southwest of the United States it's always bright sunlight even in the winter time typically so a lot of times you can't see the screen on this camera and there's no eye level viewfinder on these and that's why I like to use a little external hot shoe mounted optical viewfinder this has the same equivalent angle of view as the lens itself and so it's basically locates the viewfinder directly above the taking lens so you really don't have any parallax error side to side but you do have to do a little adjustment I typically will compose the picture so the center of my image is a little bit lower than what I want for the final image I'm shooting the recall in aperture priority mode and typically I'm keeping the aperture around f5.6 around the middle of the range where you get the best optical quality it's bright enough and you have enough depth of focus that it works quite well for the Canon T7 and I too usually keep it in aperture priority mode in outdoor use I shoot around f5 or so I will put it in auto ISO so the ISO can go up and down however it wants to I usually adjust the exposure compensation sensation on this for minus one third. The Rico, on the other hand, I set the exposure to highlight priority, highlight metering, which means it underexposes the image so that the highlights are not blown out. And then in post, when you edit the picture, you can raise the shadow detail. 
the Canon T7 does not have sensor stabilization, whereas the Ricoh does. The Ricoh has a built-in ND filter behind the lens. The Canon doesn't. Aperture priority, I use both of these in aperture priority in daylight outdoors. When I go indoors under more minimal lighting conditions, I will typically set the camera to shutter speed priority so that I keep my shutter speed fast enough so I don't have motion blur. Of course, this camera also has a built-in flash, so indoors you can uh, pop the flash and do fill flash as well, which is kind of nice. Battery life. So the Ricoh doesn't have great battery life. It has a pretty small size uh, little battery like this. These are DB110s is the name of these batteries. Typically what I'll do for the Ricoh though when I'm actually using it out in the field is I will power it on, take my shot, and then immediately power it off. And that's how I use it. So I, I don't keep it on all the time unless I'm in a situation where I, I anticipate taking multiple shots. On the other hand, the Canon has extraordinary battery life, and I've had the same battery in this camera for a couple months, <laughs> and I only use it for a, a walk in the mornings, and then I turn it off. And I use it in this mode where the, the back screen is really only an information screen, and it goes off, it blanks out after a few, maybe 30 seconds or whatever, so it's not really running the screen. The viewfinder is optical, not electronic. I find myself really liking this melted candy bar shaped lump of plastic that has no aesthetic appeal and is not a fetish object. It's just strictly utilitarian and that's all it's good for and that's actually what I really like about this camera is it is kind of ugly so the only thing that really matters with this camera ultimately are the pictures. It's strictly for creating images whereas a nice looking camera like the Ricoh, you could almost fetishize this camera. In fact, people do because of the small, compact nature of it. And it especially, I think, looks good with a viewfinder like that. And it's easy to get caught up in the aesthetics of cameras and how they look rather than the pictures that they make. I've always been the guy that's gone my own way with things. I tend not to follow the crowd as, as far as what's popular, I think. You know, these kind of cameras, especially the crop sensor, APS-C sized digital SLRs, are not the kind of camera you'll see people using for street photography on YouTube, for instance. These kind of cameras kind of fall below the radar screen. They are just utilitarian, kind of ugly looking, plasticky looking strictly functional cameras. They are kind of like blenders or toasters. They are just designed to do one thing, but they do them really well. But as far as practical photography, capturing images, few cameras are going to be as well served as a digital SLR because you have the advantage of optical through the lens viewing so you have exact framing. If the kind of photography you like to do is highly dependent on the accuracy of the composition, in other words you play with the way lines and objects intersect or come close to the borders, the edges of your frame, you use the entire frame for your composition. If that's the kind of photography you like, you really need a camera where you can accurately compose in the viewfinder and if you kind of like a film camera like experience it's nice to have an optical viewfinder instead of mediated through a TV screen. This might be a little bit more of a fetish object. The Ricoh GR is a very small camera and I think I would argue with the external viewfinder it looks quite nice in a certain way but it's twice as expensive as this even with a kit lens on this, this is about twice as expensive. And this isn't as capable of a camera as this, except it's pocketable. You can literally stick it in your pants pockets. On the other hand, this is a very intentional camera. You can't hide it. It's very obvious that you're a photographer, and maybe that's the best way to shoot pictures. So two entirely different kinds of cameras two different ways of shooting, two different ways of approaching photography. And in the end result, it's really about the picture itself. And so I present you a humble slideshow of some of the images I've taken recently with both of these cameras.
Enjoy. Enjoy.